Welcome to the So You Want to Get Fat podcast. I am your host, Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Look at that cup, too. Real nice, real nice. And I'm Frenchy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am having a Cronenberg. And uh, tell the people what you're drinking over there, buddy. Delirium Noel. Ooh. With the delirium glass. I noticed that we got a lot of complaints that we were drinking out of the goddamn I know, bottle. I know, and I know, we like, did. And they were annoyed that we were drinking good quality beers too out yeah. of a bottle. I know. So, to our fans, here we go. And I'm giving it a good head. Yes. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> My man, it's good to see you. Always good to see you. We had a momentous Monday. Yeah, we did. We did. How are we going to put... Uh, no, that was just for us. Yeah, that was just for but us. But we still have to mention it, right? We have to mention it. It is official. Frenchie and I are officially in business together. We are business partners. We are business partners. We signed a contract. We opened a bank account. Um, As of this morning, we made we made money. On what? I don't know, but there's a penny in our account. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Here we go, baby. <laughs> I didn't even know. Zero point zero one. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Well, we're drinking beers. Uh, this is we are filming this um, after the Thanksgiving. Yeah. Holiday. Don't mention what time it is that we're already drinking. Yeah. For real. Yeah. For real. It's uh, it's eight p.m. It's yeah. It's 8 p.m. It's eight p.m. Yeah. For real. For real. Um. <laughs> well, yeah. I think eight. both you and I are a little hangry. I brought us lunch. Yeah. So I brought us. Uh, oops. There we go. I brought us. Oh, you see, this is why I love Amy so much. She she split the split. She already got us. She two split trays, the split. Split the split, and there's two lollipops oh, in here. And I'm happy that like we're only eating that. Yeah. So this is our spicy Nikki Chicky Parm sandwich. It has chicken wait, cutlet. Nikki, wait, Nikki Chicky. Nikki Chicky Parm. Wait, did Adam Sandler make a movie where he was like a devil? Son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nikki, well, some, Nikki. Yeah, yes, Nikki something. Yeah. Well, uh, before anything, cheers, buddy. All right. Kiss me with your eyes. Mm. God damn. I'm, I'm having a Cronenberg. Um, uh, Tebow got me a case of this. <laughs> the green bottle one. You guys normally have the, the blue bottle one in stock. What's the difference? This is Oh, fuck. All the French people are going bad yeah. Frenchmen. This, this is a lager. The other one's a wheat beer. Oh, that's yeah. all you then. No, no, I, I love this. Like, oh, I like the lager. Oh, then I'll like that one. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like the IPAs. I don't like any all the bitter stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the delirium is perfect. It's definitely a <sighs> more bold, thicker beer, which I normally don't go for. It's got nice packaging. Yes, beautiful packaging. Um, but we got a little gift from uh, Heatnist. The yes. Stranger Things hot sauce pack, which is now available. I don't know when this episode will come out. Um, truthfully, I don't watch Stranger Things. Oh, I love it. You love it? Yeah. I've heard nothing but great things. And uh, of course, when Metallica blew up, they, there was some scene with some dude playing yes. a Metallica song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that blew up. So, of course, I've heard all about it. I just I, I tend to not invest myself into television shows because I don't have time. <laughs> But uh, Frenchie has time because not that I have time, but if there's like a, a binge worthy day, mm -hmm. there's okay. yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, so I figure well, to be honest with you, like that was all uh, pandemic era, right? When that show, the first season, I haven't been good at watching TV lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we digging into these sandwiches? Yeah, well, so this is called the spicy Nikki Chicky Parm. It's chicken cutlet, house made marinara sauce. Shredded mozzarella, um, sharp provolone, uh, basil, and Italian herb mayo sauce. Wait, red chili move, flake. Gonna have to move the and mic. Oregano. Yeah, yeah, we are, we're both gonna have to. Gonna now, have this to is called, the like I said, the spicy Nikki Chicky Parm. I figure it'd be fun to have hot sauce. Wait, with the I gotta, spicy. I got to do a comparison bite though. Okay, okay. Take take a bite first. Now, this this sandwich has been in transit, so maybe a little cold. I apologize, buddy, but uh. You know, I also had to set up the podcast and everything. Is this the normal 
spiciness level on yeah. this? Yeah. It has pepperoni, hot honey, and I figure, thank you to Heatness. Yeah, this is uh, white spicy. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand, have your white friend explain it to you. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm going to do some quality. Oh, and it has the addition of burrata because you hit me up on Instagram. Like, how come I don't bring you th this sandwich? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so this has added burrata in it as well. Okay. Let's do like bite for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bite for bite with the sauces. Okay. First sauce, Surfer Boy Pizza. Let's see, pineapple pizza flavored hot sauce. Oh, that sounds fun. Pineapple. No, oh, that sounds very uh, West Coast. No, I love it. I love pineapple on pizza. I don't care what anyone says. Hell yeah. Now, full disclosure. I do work with Heatness. I carry three of their sauces at my shop. Oh man, that's good. Yeah, but but pineapple isn't the first flavor. Yeah, it's you not got. the flavor. Yeah. It's the sweetness of it's it. It's the sweetness of it. It's it's the component you use it's as got, a sugar. Um, it's got like a roasted pineapple flavor to it, which I really like. I love roasted pineapple. I'm going for second. Yeah, so, me too. So actually. that means yeah, that means a lot. This is great. I want to see what's the chili in here. So it's based with red jalapeno, onion, red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. And always remember, guys, when you're reading ingredients label, they list it from the most to the least. So red jalapeno, onion, red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, water, green pepper, calamala olives. That's what I'm getting. Pineapple. So pineapple is one of the least prominent ingredients here. Olive oil, tomato puree, But black not in pepper. their title. Not in the title, yeah. Yeah, but you don't need it. It's probably yeah. so they probably do a reduction version of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it probably gets reduced and cooked down mm -hmm. before it's introduced mm -hmm. into this. So you're getting like an intense flavor. Wait, what have for? All right. We're okay. gonna try this next one. Hellfire Club. Here, I'll let you go first. No, you go oh. first. Hellfire? Oh. Fuck you. Mango. Well, let's read the the only the most dedicated will take this on their campaign. Scotch bonnet chilies mingle with sweet mango and a zip of gin ginger. Before Scotch bonnet heat delivers a stinging blow to your taste buds. Okay, so a mango and Scotch blow. bonnet. Mango and Scotch bonnet. Careful, buddy. This one smells hot as fuck. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're All good. Right. We're good. All right. Okay. I love the flavor. Mm. That mm. is drastically mm -mm 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 -mm. original. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Hell yeah. Whoa, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's kicking your ass. Yep. Well, I'm catching up. Yeah, I put way too much in that one bite. Mmm. 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 Very original flavor, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got a kick. Definitely has a serious kick. I like it though. They don't taste like anything else. That's what's great. <clears throat> yeah, that is 100% for sure. Okay, Benny's Burgers hot sauce. Benny's Burgers hot sauce. Every greasy diner burger needs a special sauce and we like ours a little spicy. Benny's Burgers hot sauce features a tang tangy combo of mustard, pickles, and onions that'll turn your burger world upside down. Nice. And oh, it's, it's a secret sauce version. Yeah. But, but spicy. Canola oil, chopped garlic, dill pickles, lemon juice, red jalapeno. Okay. Sick. I'm preparing the landing strip for the sauce. As per usual, I will go first. Yeah. But this is my little guinea pig. This is a jalapeno based sauce, so I think it'll be fine. Again, I don't know why you have issues with the with that motion. <laughs> Come on, what's an oomph into it? There you go. Okay, that's too much now. It's a thick, ooh, ooh, that's yeah. a lot. Okay. Would you consider this a personal sized or, uh, sandwich? No, I'm out. No. Uh, I don't know. Is this a carry around bottle? We'll find out. Mm. That's mm. mine. Wow. Mmm. It's definitely your burger sauce, but spicy. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll keep this one on my side. You can. I like this. Hellfire Club. <laughs> you okay there, buddy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Put a huge dab of that. I hope we're gonna have to edit this down. There's no way people are gonna watch us mm -hmm. to get a whole goddamn sandwich. Two hours later. Thank you again to Heatness for hooking us up with the Stranger Things hot sauce pack. You guys can pick up your own set uh, on uh, at heatness.com. Link will be in the description below. There's no affiliate code or anything. I don't get anything out of telling you this. It's just they wanted me to check it out and it was pretty bomb. Uh, they would like me to do some kind of special sandwich with, with it, so. Uh, it's my first time tasting it. Absolutely banging. I yeah. like it. As long as it doesn't taste like a billion other hot sauces, that's my thing. I like right. hot sauces are good, right? Yeah. And no complaints. But when you can get a hot sauce to taste original Ooh. on its own. Oh, they did a good job there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all right, buddy. That's well, good. When I got to blow my nose like that. Yeah, uh, as you can see. We have a many of the packages. It looks like we got some fan we mail. We got some fan art. So uh, I figure we just dive right in. You yeah. ready? Okay. Let's, well, the first one I opened. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I am excited to check this out. This is from, excuse me, Kristen from uh, Iowa. That's all I'll say. Let's first make sure that you sent us a sheet of paper that let us know. Okay, I saw a little bit of the yeah. art. Yeah. Okay, good. She told us her shirt size, and uh, now you can see this art. I'm guessing you saw it already. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got a little preview when I was just looking in there, but uh... <laughs> oh man, look at that. We got to hold it there. Hopefully Not it'll... fat. Yeah. Jordan, uh, hopefully that's in focus, and I'm gonna move my face behind there. Hopefully that's in focus now and you can zoom in a little. But uh, it is two stick figures, me with my hat and glasses, you, not fat. Not fat. <laughs> nice, all right. Hell yeah. So that is our second piece of fan mail. Oh, this is the second one. Yeah, don't you remember the, uh, what's his name? He sent oh, us the guy on sent email. Us well, on he sent it on an email. Does email, that count? Yeah. yeah, that counts. Yeah, right? Yeah, that counts. And it was good, so it, it does good. count. Yeah, yeah. And that was, uh, so there, it should be chronologically. Okay, well, then that's the next one because I that's been sitting there for a while. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So what's this? I don't know. I did open this, but n not that one, the, the USPS box. All right, this is from Robert from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, maybe I don't need the knife for this. this right. Is this is exciting. Ooh. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna be very careful. Holy shit. Did a very good job packing this up. Oh, I, I, uh, I didn't look in the box if there was a size in there. <gasps> no way. Wow. Okay, you, you're okay. not doing it. Why are you getting it? Because I'm the one opening it. First, first, I'm gonna see if he put in a, he did put in a return address. What? I don't see a piece of paper. It's probably, it's it. probably in there. Yeah, maybe. I just want to check before I reveal. All right, buddy. Oh my gosh. Is it that good? It's good. I'm gonna, he did it on both sides too. No way. Ready? Right. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And look, 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 look at this. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, he did put in a piece of paper with his size. Very good, very good, very good. Here, put this in front of the, let me move my mic back. Hold this steady. Hopefully that's focusing. And now the other side, this is so good. Oh my gosh. Is that what I look like? Oh no, let me just, just in case. Hold it steady. We're gonna keep that for our, our my before picture. Yeah. Uh, ooh, there's a whole letter in there. Mm. Should I read it? So read it, read it. Okay. Hey, Brian and Frenchie. Whoa, that's a long letter. Yes. Okay, we're in, let me, let me get comfy. <laughs> <laughs> 
My name's Robert. I'm the one who drew both of these picks. Pieces. I drew Frenchie's art while watching the Sniper Wolf, Sniper Wolf podcast episode. While work on, working on your second, I encountered a number of problems. First, while gluing down the drawing, the glue got in my hands and it uh, managed to spread on the front. I tried to fix it with paint essentially like a whiteout. Then while inking it, my good pen stopped, stopped working. So I had to swap pens while doing the outline. Little did I know the solvent used in my sealer would dissolve the ink's pigment, causing it to bleed into the paper. Ah, I see. Okay, but well, hey man, I thought that was part of the art to be honest yeah. with you. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and send both pieces. However, if you don't like how yours turned out, of course I like how it turned out. I would be more than happy to redo it. No, you don't need to redo it. I just wanted to get these Not mailed to redo out. it. You could do more. <laughs> For more shirts. Uh, mailed out. And uh, Frenchie has a bunch of other shirts. You know, yeah. can send you something else. Yeah, just yeah. in your note, make sure you say, I already got a Fosby, and then we'll. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's going to have a, a little extra surprise. Don't yeah. worry. I'm not um, going to say it because I don't want to be, I don't want to make more promises. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to get these mailed out to y'all in time. If you want me to redo it, just shoot me a DM on Discord and I'll get it done. Keep up the awesome content. Just is some it, uh, finer details. Wow. So cool. That is. That is awesome. Uh, I just want to make sure none of this gets lost so everybody it, gets their t-shirt. It does make it look like, um, it makes me think of... Uh, What's the aha? Uh -huh, the aha uh -huh music video? No, Take on well, a little bit because yeah. it's in black and white. Yeah. But the but it makes it makes it look so it's what's the the video game um, Grand Theft Auto? It's called you know, GTA. GTA. Yeah. So you know when they, they the, it reminds me of the the cover art. Oh yeah 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 I know what you mean yeah yeah all right all right uh, someone sent us a Amazon package. Le Ravage Restaurant, Care of Frenchie. Betty Crocker Microwave Cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> wait, who said this? Oh, wait. No, no. That's Blondie ordered that. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Got, oh, it went to the wrong address. <laughs> wait, really? Wait, no, wait. No. Wait. Microwave Cookbook? A gift for you. So you thought I was joking. Oh, my gosh. They wouldn't let me ship green peas from Teth Telthar. Uh, uh, there was someone who mentioned something about a microwave cookbook and that they would send it, and they really sent it. No way. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> wait, wait. It's can a microwave can... cookbook. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I mean. There's no return address for us to send you a shirt, though. She'll get it to us now. Yeah. Wait, what year is this? <clears throat> Random House, New York. Not, wait, what year? Copyright. 1981. <laughs> this is 10 years younger than me. <laughs> By Betty, it's, and there's a Betty Crocker forward. Oh shit. Okay, this is pretty cool. That is cool. That is very cool. We should- uh, Definitely getting a shirt. I don't, definitely getting a shirt. Please hit us up so we can get you a shirt, but I don't remember the exact comment, I think they were saying as, I think, don't quote me on this, they were saying that as a cooking video idea, we should try to recreate some of these recipes, which actually I wanted to talk about, you and I spoke about doing more cooking videos. We've been talking about doing it behind the green doors and but, building up. But, but you figured out. I figured out that the dining room at Le Ravage is perfect. You like the sound. I like the you sound. You like the lights better. Yeah. And you like the interaction with the kitchen. Yes. Yes, I love so the plus, kitchen plus, is right. Plus. Yeah, plus, plus, plus. But also, I really feel the Le Ravage dining room is like its own character. You know, just like certain movie sets are almost its own character, like Gotham City is a character. I think you had this conversation with Blondie and I kind of like yeah. zoned out. So like a Mar Martin, Martin Scorsese movie, right? Or a, uh, like Goodfellas. New York is definitely a character in that movie. Well, right? I told you. Oh, wait, no. I was, in, I was part of that conversation because yeah. I mentioned that they used... Like they use our dining room for a lot of t uh, movie sets and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The last one was um, Gotham. Right? Gotham. Yeah. So, for all you Gotham fans and DC, what, what a, that's DC, DC comic books, DC. right? Figure out which uh, episodes we're in. Going for another one. 
La Ravage, attention, Brian the, and Frenchie. For the longest time, uh, I think on Seinfeld, they used to use the outdoor signage. But do you know how when they always show you the outside, but yeah. when you go inside, it's a set. It's right. not the real place. Right. Uh, Whoa, dude. What? What? Tim from Australia. Somebody Australia. sent this from Australia. Oh, the, the cost of sending it The cost it here. of this is, dude, thank you so much, Tim. Wow, this is really, like, to know we have fans willing to uh, send us stuff this far and wide is pretty... Well, especially after I talked ill about the... <laughs> <gasps> wow, look at this. Holy fuck, I love that. Wait, 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 let's just, I just want Jordan to be able to zoom Ooh, in. Ooh, there's a little anime in there. There's some anime in there. It has your burger on there? And I like how there's some chubbiness to me, but without having I to think, be. I think I remember this dude commenting he was going to send us this. Chicken salt. Ch in the same package? Yeah. So what? what is it? A dry chicken stock? I have no idea. With salt? Country of origin, Australia. <laughs> That's Wait, it. Are you allowed to send that through the... <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay. I love this. That is cool. That is so Oh, cool. for a change, your nose is bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oi, you have the guitar. Yeah. Well, I have a semblance of a chef and you have a semblance of a... Well, I always wear my denim apron over my white coat. So he got everything right, but he he's a, he's a he follows us closely. He knows I play and, guitar and all that. Dude, stuff. even the hair here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He got, he's got the two widow peaks. Yeah. It's not... This is, I like this yeah, one. I like this one a lot. That's and he, but look, he put PCR, Pro Chef Reacts. No way. Yeah, on your coat. Like, and he, and this, that's even an accurate guitar headstock. That's a Fender. Okay, I got to look guitar. at it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it again. This is an actual French onion soup burger. Yeah. Because it's got the, it's got onion, the onion and the pickle. And, yeah. And it's got the two different sets of cheeses on it. Oh, he put both sets of cheeses? Well, look, it's got the thing underneath and it's got the melted, the sauce over it, the melted cheese sauce over it. Wow. Well, I think that's the burger patty with the sauce on top. Either way, that's a Either lot. way, that's that impressive. He got both the onion and the gherkin yeah. on the toothpick. Amazing attention to detail. Wow. That is, wait, wait, we need we need to we need to gawk over this a little yeah. more. It deserves attention. And you put my flag and none for you. <laughs> you get no ice cream. You get no ice cream. Your mom's on welfare. <laughs> No, nah, nobody's gonna know it. Nope. Remember that? I don't know what you're referring. Oh, it's Eddie Murphy. From what movie? No, that's from his uh, uh, SNL bits. No, that's from his um, his stand up. Oh, that's stand up. Yeah. Okay, all right. We got another one. Cut, had to clear customs. This is from the UK. Um, uh, all my English fans or oh, UK. Wait, wait. wait a second. Did this did this dude give us a return address? There's a return address but I don't see a t-shirt size. Oh, he did put chicken salt seasoning on the, on the, <laughs> on the customs. And it went, it went through customs? Oh, okay, good, good, good. It's, it's back on the back? There. Yeah. It just, Is there uh, a lot written? Yeah, you want me to read it? I don't see a t-shirt size though. He looks like a uh, large. <laughs> <laughs> Love what you guys have been doing. Uh, hey, Brian and Frenchie. Love what you guys have been doing with the channels. I think that SYWGF pod is a great idea. Listening to it while trying to do the opposite and get skinny has been a joy <laughs> living through your experiences. By the time this arrives, I should finally be a line cook patron. Oh, he's uh, one of my patrons on Patreon, which we need to start one eventually. I've been meaning for a while, but exchange rates are a bitch. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. One day, I hope to actually get over there and taste your cooking. But if you ever find yourselves in Sydney and need a guide, hit me up. Hey, sending what I can only re really call Australia's signature seasoning for you guys. It's called chicken salt as it was invented in the 70s to season rotisserie chickens. Try it on French fries. As that's the staple to. here. Now we have to keep on keeping guys. Uh, I really hope there's a t-shirt size in here. There is not. So, Tim, oh, hit me up on Patreon. That's the way to do it. I'm just realizing I shouldn't have brushed my teeth before that hot sauce. <laughs> this is from Henry of the UK, and it says canvas handmade. 
Do you think Customs opened it and resealed it? Mm, kind of looks like it. Not sure. <gasps> we have hit the mother load today. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? There's a frame? Yeah. On it's framed and everything. Okay, this one's going right behind me. Every day may not be good, but there is good in every day. Uh oh, that's nice. The Random Hen 22. I guess this is a piece he bought? No. It looks like he no, made that. It's on the back, it says the Random Hen year 2022. There you go. Really? Yeah, well, there's a note in here, so. Well, let's read the note. Hi, Brian and Frenchie. I'm not sure if this was the sort of art you are after, but I'm sending it anyway. Laugh out loud. Love the shows and thank you to Guga. Praise be to Stakes for sharing you. Oh, that's nice. Keep up the fantastic work and I'll visit when I'm next in New York. T-shirt smaller M please. It's uh, as it's UK, UK sizes are different. Thank you again for bringing such happiness with your craziness. Take care, Hen, Henny, not Henry. Ah, okay. Wait, but that's, so that's her. Henny. Yeah. yeah. So this is, so she made this. Oh, oh, that, get it? Right, Pen? right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. All right. Hey. So she did make it. She did make it. That's epic. Hell yeah. Oh, and that's perfect. Yeah. That is perfect. I like that a lot. Yeah, we're right. not, it doesn't have to be about us. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about us, 100%. Um, let's put it all in here along with the note because I want to make you sure. You want to keep it all together. Yeah, because okay. I will send Blondie all the addresses at once. Yes. You know, and. And then backtrack that uh, the I first will. one because. I will. We want, we definitely need to honor this. Yeah. 100%. People, you need to be patient with Blondie. <laughs> Lord knows I am. Oh boy. Oh, and then uh, this is a buddy, Sam. He has a hot sauce line, Sam's a house. Okay, okay, we did well, our- yeah, We will do, we will taste, Sam, I promise you, we will taste these on the next podcast. Oh wait, those are cool though. Let me see yeah. the labels. Well, let's not take away from uh, today. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna dedicate, dedicate a whole, a whole thing. Wait, and you got stickers? Stickers too. Okay, I need something to put stickers on. Okay, well, you, you have the laptop. You have the. Laptop. Yeah, oh, you can have those stickers. Hundred percent. Okay, we will. I feel like I did a we good will job. Cover, when I get a sticker. We will do Samsa House on a sep on a different episode. What's it called? Samsa. Sam. Sam's house. Sam's a house. Sam's a house. I don't trust your. Samsa house. Samsa out. Why, 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 don't, why don't you trust it when I read it, huh? Because you're illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let the glasses and the Asian head fool you. He's dumb as a doorknob. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was so much fun. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that segment as much as we did. Uh, you know, the. This is kind of breathtaking. Oh. I'm really blown away. Doesn't this remind you of the Christmas morning feeling? It like does. getting that stuff? It that does. was, I like that. It does. Uh, thank you very very much, everyone. This did feel like Christmas morning. I think by the time this episode comes out, it'll kind of be like Christmas time. So what's our lag time right now? Right now, I think we have three additional episodes banked up. Are people annoyed that we're not being chronological? Uh, I don't, uh, you know, only a couple people have caught on that the last episode that came out of us filming this today, they're like, hey, when did when did you guys film this, you know? But, you know, for example, it, we, we, we did that because uh, last week was Thanksgiving holiday. We didn't get together last week. So Thursday, it was Thanksgiving. So we didn't, we didn't film last week. Oh, but yeah. we did see each other. But we did see each other. <laughs> Um, we did see each other. We just didn't feel it for, you know, you're right. You like, yeah. you said it best on Monday. Like there's some things that don't get taped. It's yeah. just for us. It's just for us. You know, we, we had, we had the friends giving with our family. Even though every time, but that's the magic of like, when I, when we're together, even this feels yeah. like it's just us. Well, it's just you a hangout. I mean? It's just a hangout. Um, cheers to you, brother. Partner. Partner. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did. We saw each other twice, but we didn't. <laughs> we we didn't film. With that said, um, no, nope. Blani took a picture on Monday. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That's not like the video cameras rolling and shit. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. By the time, yeah. So, but we're not filming next week because next week I'm busy. My main guy at the shop is 
going on vacation, so I'm going to be busy at my restaurant. Um, so thankfully, we have an episode banked up, so we don't miss a beat. You know we just I mean? have one banked. We have three banked. Okay. Yeah. Because you know, we'll, but we we'll, should only we shouldn't count on that. No, no. But also, we were just filming. And we're posting twice a week. No, we're film. We're posting once a week for this. For this, yeah. But then Pro Chef reacts. We ha basically we have two pieces of content coming out every week. Okay. But the podcast. We have three banked for this. For this, and we have nothing banked for Pro Chef React. Oh no. Yeah, we have one more that's coming out next week, and that's it. Oh, then we need to get on top of yeah, something. Yeah, we have to get on top of it. Yeah. Um, but the podcast, you know, also we just kind of like, it just sort of happened, you know. We just always filmed every week, every single time we filmed the Pro Chef Reacts, we ended up filming a podcast and. I just, it, it was going so well, I didn't want to stop the momentum. And that's kind of why we have so many episodes banked up. It was, that wasn't the intention. If know? we're capable of keeping the momentum uh, throughout the holidays, yeah. which is right now, we're right into it and still do it, I'm happy. Because mm. in January, February, it's just going to be like easy peasy. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure we'll miss Christmas week, but um, yeah. We no, because Christmas morning is a Monday. Why would we miss that Thursday. Oh, okay. Good point. Good point. Anyway. I think you picked up my dirty habit of twisting in your chair. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I do sit across from you all the time. Uh, with that said, um, let's see. What else? What else did I want to get to today? I know you have a laundry list. We talked about doing cooking videos from the Le Ravage dining room. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments below what are some things you would like to see us cook. I have some ideas. I, I, I will tell you the first video or the next video I would like to do, I think would be kind of interesting for the both of us. Blondie said we have to have to do the French ramen. Yes, yes. I think people want to see the French ramen. I think people really want to see the French Max from us. French Maximus? French Max. Oh, the French Max. Yeah, French Max. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also thinking that we do a soup and a sandwich. We do your French onion soup. And I wanted to recreate Gordon Ramsay's grilled cheese. Are you familiar with Gordon Ramsay's grilled cheese? No. We will one day react. Oh, okay, no, we're not doing this today. <laughs> we're not doing this today. Oh, okay, good. But, <laughs> Frenchie has no idea what he's in store for. It, it's great, you know, it's Gordon Ramsay. How, how can it ever go wrong? Gordon Ramsay making grilled cheese. It's nothing that could go wrong at all. It won't, be, it won't be a grilled cheese. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but it won't be a grilled cheese. Um, so anyway, let us know in the comments below what are some other ideas. Love to hear from you. We'll definitely check it out. But yes, we will actually, I think, start doing cooking videos more regularly uh, and sooner than we expected. The Drio video, which was so much fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. Um, but kind of like showed us what we were capable of. We I and I love the positive reaction to it. Yeah. There was a lot of positive reaction. There were some technical things Jordan and I want to work on, but th th those are easy fixes. But other than that, like the what? important thing is that it was fun. No, I don't need to know. You don't need to know. Just, just show up and be pretty. Exactly. That's all. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well, there is one specific topic I want to cover, but we'll cover that a little towards the end. Uh, in my last, in the last solo Pro Chef Reacts episode, mm -hmm. I talked about, and I've been teasing this forever, how I accidentally took over a Chinese takeout restaurant. I was the owner of a Chinese you takeout. accidentally <laughs> took over? Uh, not, not accidentally. I involuntarily took over a Ch Chinese takeout restaurant. Yeah, that doesn't sound possible. Well, it is possible. There's decision making. There is a whole story behind it. And I will tell everybody a little later in the video because we're going to go to one of my favorite segments and actually one of yours. Now, I know, Frenchie, that you love, you love, love, love viewer comment of uh, your questions. Th is this already what it's going to be? What? No, no. Pink, this, this is pink sauce. No, no. It's this oh, okay. is from oh. the pink sauce lady video. OK, don't you worry. Don't you worry. What I want to cover is viewer comments. You like viewer oh, I questions, do, I do. but viewer comments are just as fun. Wait, so, did, wait, what difference? Wait. So viewer comments are comments on our videos we put out together. Okay. Right? Just fun comments that I see and I screenshot and I show it here for everyone to see. Viewer questions is when they actually ask us very specific oh, questions. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, they're, they're very similar. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, one thing I do want to mention is in our Pink Sauce Lady Lies and Now Exposed video, Kendra Middleton Williams 
commented and you know we just unveiled and showed a bunch of fan art mm -hmm. i will send you an art piece painting if i get a space behind frenchie it's going to be created just for y'all so it'll take a bit Wait, of time it's got to be behind me but it's for y'all yeah <laughs> Say yes, and I'll get started. But the agreement is, as in frame Frenchie space. She, uh, I love Paul. Well, I love, <clears throat> well, I love both of you, but I went to university in France, so I'm biased. She will make us art if you guarantee she gets a space behind you. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> okay. Didn't say how long. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. We'll put All it right, right, Kendra. We'll put it right there. Yeah. And if I don't like it, we'll take it right off. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that answers your question, Kendra. No, it'll be good. I, you need to, you need to add incentive. Yeah. Okay. And, and it can't just be because you said you literally said send us stick figures and we'll send you a T-shirt and someone literally <laughs> sent us stick, stick figures. figures. Yeah. <laughs> now we said the first two dozen, I think. So we there's yeah, still don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. We got so many t-shirts. Okay, all right, all right. As long as Blondie gets them out. Yeah. Well, remember when I used the example of ding dong sauce? <laughs> well, <laughs> this whole ding dong sauce has taken on a fucking life of its own. And uh, I mean, I, I see ding dongs in our future. <laughs> <laughs> so many people have left so many fucking comments about ding dong sauce. Uh, this is from the same episode. Brian gave ding dongs. Brian gave Ding Dong Sauce's slogan there, Ding Dong Sauce. Let, Let me, me finish. finish. <laughs> okay. Oh man, and if you guys didn't see that episode, definitely check it out. Pink Sauce Lady worked with Dave's Gourmet. They created uh, a sauce and I used Ding Dong Sauce as a, as a example. Um, Chris Parkins says, so Dave, so debut the ding dong sauce at the meet and greet. And, greet. and people are spelling it meet. meet and greet. Yeah, don't forget guys, uh, Frenchie and I've I. I've actually been thinking about this. Meet and greet. Yeah, yeah. because um, we're gonna have, we, we need to have the, the lamb that yeah. we did, yep. but we might we might have to switch to the lollipops. Okay. So that people can yeah. hold them. Yeah. Everything's gotta be finger foods. Okay. So people can't be afraid of like getting their hands greasy. Okay. Right, so we'll have wet wet naps or whatever. Yeah. What do you call that? Yeah, wet, wet naps. wipes or wet, wet, wet naps. Yeah. No, wet wipes are for babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's our world. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, but it, it's got to be a carnivorous meet and greet. Okay, whatever you want, buddy. It, we don't. It doesn't have to stick to. A, we should definitely serve your burger. Yeah, we should. You know, we should do like uh, we should do um, audacious meats, snails. Frog legs. <laughs> I mean, we should definitely do your S cargo, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. Um, we're 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 thinking of doing this for next year, guys. It's something that will take some planning. That's in a month and a half. Yeah, in a month and a week. Q one, twenty twenty four. Q one, okay. first quarter. Yeah, first quarter. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, but like should, should we too? Should we try to make ding dong sauce? Yeah, yeah, but I want it to be French, of course. Yeah. So can can we can we like make a uh, can we make hollandaise with all that duck fat you have? Yeah, but hollandaise is gonna be yellow. Oh yeah, true. We need, for white, there's a difficulty factor yeah, in yeah. making it white. White, yeah. All right, we'll figure it out. We'll have a ding dong sauce. We'll have a ding dong sauce. <laughs> well, everybody's ding dong sauce is not the same color, by the way. <laughs> so there's a spectrum of ding dong yeah, you know, sauce. You, you know, I, from, it gets from clear to cloudy. It gets, <laughs> From is it pre or is it latter? <laughs> you know, it did gets you get me that? So, did you get uh, that? Yes, I did. I, I got it. Pre com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it, bud. You know, it gets me so upset that Pink Sauce Lady got this deal with Dave's Gourmet, and I'm saying like they should be. They we should we should we should pay. We should do them a solid. Yeah. And then give them a winning yeah. situation. Yes. We. Do oh, you guys, how conceited that does that sound? Help like? us get Dave's Gourmet on our side. Start hashtagging them, tagging them, whatever it takes. Like, Dave's Gourmet. Find they wa Dave's they wanted gourmet. to take a chance on someone. Yeah. Take a chance on yeah. on something that's guaranteed. I, I got it. I got it. Hashtag release ding dong sauce. <laughs> Tag Dave's Gourmet. Everybody, you have your work cut out for you. Did you just come up with that? I just came up with that. That's so good. <laughs> but, but. How about this? Let's sweeten it up. Let's sweeten it a little more for the audience. If 
the audience actually helps us make this happen. And mm -hmm. you are, this is all being filmed right now. Let's say the audience, there's enough. Okay, we're, we're gonna hit up uh, Dave's Dave's Gourmet? Dave's Gourmet. But what if somebody else comes along and okay. come along, it comes along and wants stuff? If, if through this podcast and the help of our audience. We don't want to shame Dave's Gourmet right, either. Right, no, we're not, that's not the point because listen to what I'm about to propose. Okay. If the audience can find us a company to allow us to essentially white label a sauce, right? Release the ding dong sauce. <laughs> I say any profit we generate from that first run of ding dong sauce, we give to charity. A hundred percent. We don't need that money. We don't need it. I mean, it'd be sweet, but like we don't need it, you know? So I say, you know, to incentivize our audience to help us and for a good cause, if you guys make it happen and a company releases a sauce with us, straight up white labeling, you know, obviously we'll have some We input, need a charity that corrects uh, Pink Lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, without sounding yeah unwoke yeah. <laughs> what charity could we do <laughs> oh let's, that sounds terrible let's, already let's just let's just take all that money if this actually happens if we manage to release ding dong sauce through any company mm -hmm. the first run let's give all the money to charity all of it you done you, yeah uh, you down I'm good okay all right fine uh, let's let's shake on that we're, we're partners. We're already 50-50, uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't ready have to shake yeah, on yeah, anything yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, we're already tied in. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. tied in. Yeah, it's it's tied solid. In. You guys heard it. So start uh, hashtagging release ding dong sauce. And then the whole concept of finding charity can what? be its own thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Remember uh, on the on the po on some ordinary podcast, the the whole issue yes. of that guy? You're like, yeah, there's so many. Fu and, and the cookies. The, um uh, Pokimane and her fucking cookies, like white labeling. Like, listen, we want to white label and we will take all that money and give it a charity and we will actually give it to a charity. Unlike some of these YouTubers who, uh, yeah, yeah I don't know. I well, people are making efforts for us, right? Do we yeah. also ask at the same time what charity? Yeah, yeah and we then, should leave that to the audience. And then whatever appears the most right. wins. Yes, and we can do a poll very easily. I'm I'm being like a hundred. I, I know you you'll go along with me, but guys, we're being a hundred percent serious. Like, let me give a little more context. In that we were on some ordinary podcast. We'll put a link in the description below, and they told us about the Pokemane situation where she was basically white labeling Costco cookies, charging triple the amount, mm -hmm. and claiming that they're they have health benefits, and she are indeed the shit for two years. Um, which, you know, like it's fine to white label. On the podcast, you and I identified it happens all the time. White labeling is a very normal practice. And we're saying the first ding dong sauce will be white labeled. Yeah, that's every every successful chef before they're put out to pasture. Yeah. This is what they do. <laughs> Did I just say that? Yes. <laughs> Uh, and then there was another YouTuber. This was a completely separate topic where he had a ch he was running a charity called the Open Hands Foundation, I think, collecting money for nearly 10 years and not a single dollar was donated. So so this is the proposal to have you guys help us get a white labeled sauce, ding dong sauce. We will donate all of the money that we all the profits, essentially, because people got to get paid. All the expenses got to get covered. Frenchie and I will not take a cent of profit, and we will donate it to the ch to a charity of your choice. I mean, that's how a charity should be done. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Is it done that way? No, not all the time, unfortunately. Unfortunately, people, a lot of people make this a, a living. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. And year to year, this is what yeah. they do. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're not looking to start a charity. Don't no, no, get no, us no. wrong. We will donate it to a charity of and I, your and choice. And you know what? The fact, I work with so many charities, so yeah. I have favorites already. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should limit, we should give, we should give them a choice to pick from. Okay, like a poll. We'll do a poll. Like yeah. we'll put a list of charities. Yeah. I will put up the charities I like. Okay, fine. I'm totally fine with that. I'll let you do one. Okay, thank you. One. That's the proposal, guys. Hashtag release ding dong sauce. Release the ding yeah, dong sauce. Release the ding dong sauce, all right? Release the Kraken. <laughs> Uh, one more comment about Ding Dong Sauce. Kimberly C, 2967, she left a comment saying that she wanted to taste Paul's Ding Dong Sauce, but she sent a follow-up comment saying, thanks for reading my comment about Frenchie's Ding Dong Sauce, but you missed the part about also wanting to also trying Brian's 
ding dong sauce and providing an honest review of both. Well, right off the bat, <laughs> my my ding dong sauce comes in a bigger bottle. <laughs> I might be the smaller, shorter <laughs> one, but I got the bigger bottle. <laughs> Some people have mentioned in the Drio video that they had no idea I was taller than you. Yeah, you, yeah. but you're abnormally tall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and, and it's their, racist, it, it's their it. racist thinking that think <laughs> that Asians are all short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm abnormally tall. Say it. For an Asian. For an Asian. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's, I'm, that, but that's their thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've always known you to be tall. Yeah, well, I've I've always been a big. But what's crazy is, um, I am, I am. You're the one shortest of, one I'm, in your family. Yeah, I'm one of the shortest out of my cousins. I, I, we went through this. I'm telling yeah. you, like that 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 generation uh, of the building where I used to live was mm -hmm. bought by a Chinese company, and all the people that moved in, the families that moved in, they were all teeny tiny. Yeah, and all of their kids are now like huge, huge. Yeah. So it goes to it goes to say that there's genetics, but there's also quality of life. Oh, yeah, and, and the nutrition, hundred yeah. percent. You know, um, I you know I think there's there's one cousin actually. I think he's the same height as me, um, but the rest are. This is on my mom's side, but the rest are taller than me, like much taller than me. Yeah, but you're what? I'm six, six even six without even? shoes. Yeah, with okay. shoes I'm like six one. You know. Okay. But my, I have one cousin. I think he's the same height as me. I and the rest are tall, much taller. On my original driver's license, I was five ten. Mm -hmm. I am close to five seven now. Really? I'm definitely five eight. I've definitely shrunk in like a couple of inches already. Oh, really? But that that's much? just. You but can that's that much. But that's yes, yeah, just from the weight and the, just the standing still on, you know, constantly. Yeah. And then I used to do heavy lifting. They say that's not good either. Uh. I need to get on that thing that hangs you upside down like a bat. Yeah. Maybe I'll like get like Michael Keaton. Remember the first Batman movie? He was hanging upside down. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Love that movie. The OG Batman. Movie. Listen, people were hating on him being the first Batman. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he ended up, and now he's my favorite. Yeah, he's legend. Uh, let's see, Drio comments. Drio? Yeah, the Drio video. Oh, uh, I thought that Drio commented. No, no, no. Oh, they uh, didn't comment. Did he give us any love? Uh, no, they they gave us some love. Yeah, they they uh did they like the did they like what we did? I think so. They commented think on so. so they commented on my Instagram. They like the clip that I put from our video. With that said, I just want to thank this viewer, Lord. I don't know how to pronounce that. Kioxti, Coxti. Where are you reading this? Right here, right here. Quixote. Quixote. Okay. Quixote. Thanks, Lord Brian and Quixote. Frenchie. Ordered it for my sister and brother-in-law for Christmas. We have one viewer who ordered the Drio Chef Maker. Thank you very much, because we want to we want to work with Drio again. I so clear. we sold one. So, yeah, definitely. Actually, sold we one. sold two. Well, we sold three. Yeah, because yeah. you bought one yeah, and I, I bought one. one. <laughs> <laughs> we kept the one Drio gave us for the studio here. So it's in it's behind the green doors. You promise? Yes, I promise. Okay. I promise. Okay. Everything's uh, fifty fifty now. Everything is. 50 -50. <laughs> I now I'm just gonna be whether I care or not. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna point it out. Uh, let's see. I had the impression that Brian was shorter than Frenchie. See? <laughs> yeah. Because he's Asian, right? Yeah. But but look look at this. Did you see Frenchie sweating? He definitely had to take a shit. Oh my god, yeah. I was like, when is this over? Niala says, "Oh my god, I would die happy." If in a subsequent video, Chef Brian introduces himself as not your typical trophy wife. <laughs> now you gotta do it. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it for an upcoming. But then I have to oh, I have to open up the show then. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be hard. Yeah, that is gonna that's gonna take forever. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. No, no, no I can still say Chef Brian Sao, not your typical trophy wife. I can start that. Oh way. yeah? Yeah. Why is it as soon as you give me a script, I'm like, ugh. Because you have to put in effort. And you don't want to put in the effort. Okay. You know I'm right. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. Don Wald says, how often, how often do you see a shorter white guy next to a taller Asian guy? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, look at this. Look at this. I love this one. Great editing. 
didn't even notice the poop face. It wasn't so much a poop face as it was sweating <laughs> and just like stress. I was like, ah, I'm like, are there between shots where I'm like wiping myself down, like from the sweat? I'm sure there is, but Jordan cut off. Because trust that me, out. it was not hot. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we spoke a little bit about meet and greet. We asked uh, in the Drio video if we did a, well, also in the Wang podcast episode, mm -hmm. we said if we did a meet and greet, would people come? Well, or did people like Wang? Yeah, they loved Wang. Yeah, right? Yeah, they loved Wang. Yeah. Did we, but like, are our viewers similar to his viewers? Um, I think there's some crossover for sure. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but Henny, oh, is this the same Henny? Wait. Is that Henny? <gasps> that is Henny. It's the same Henny. No way. Yeah. Henny 420. Oh, 420. Yeah. Pothead. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I got hey. some stuff for you right here. Don't we, worry. We got some stuff yeah. in New York too. Uh, I'd come to New York. So Henny said, uh, is Henny a girl's name? Guy's name? I guess it could be both. Yeah, I, guess we'll, I don't know. I guess we'll find Henny? out. Yeah. Hennessy. Yeah. Hen. Uh, well, Henny. Uh, I guess we'll find out when you come to New York for the. Henny Youngman. Who's, who's that? Oh God, that's fucking old. <laughs> Please Let's delete. Let's see. Uh, uh, another commenter on the Drio video said, "We need to get that r ratatouille a la table during the meet and greet." <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the the video where Jordan put ratatouille a la table, table, a la table? Yeah. At the table? Yeah. No, no. You know, yeah, on the table. Oh, then he then he didn't write it right. Oh, you didn't. It's sur la table. Oh, okay. Jordan, on the table. You got to work on your French. <laughs> <laughs> he can ask me. I speak French. Yeah, you can. Not that people believe you, you this. Have, <laughs> you have Frenchie's number. Abby Wise, uh, you're going to pull out prematurely. Cooked us or interrupt us? Oh, that's when I was. Uh, yeah, when I opened the trio shit up. We pulled out the second ratatouille early. Frenchie never finished. Oh, Frenchie never finished his story about his accent. Don't leave us hanging. I guess finish your story. Why you have an accent on your French? Because you like. I have a weird accent. Yeah. We had to cut you off when we were doing the Drio video because my uh, bread, my butter was about to burn. Yeah. But the thing is, I'm like, I'm constantly, constantly intertwining languages right. constantly yeah because frenchy doesn't just speak english he doesn't just speak french mm -hmm. spanish he speaks spanish very well i mean i used to speak polish really yeah i was raised by a polish lady oh no shit. and she had taught me and then and then <clears throat> italian mm -hmm. just from working with italians mm -hmm. and then which is very similar to spanish right all right yeah and then basque everybody thinks it's similar to Spanish and French, but it's not. It's its own very distinct language. And then where I come from, everybody speaks Patois. Yeah. They don't speak French. Right. They speak Patois. Right. They learn French when they go to school. school. Most of the people in France speak their own dialect. original dialect yeah. and they learn French in school. Mm -hmm. Now everybody speaks French normally, mm -hmm. but I knew I grew up with people in France who didn't speak French. Wow. And like it was like China has a very similar. Situation. It was like their second language. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Or they had, or they were forced to learn it in school. Right, and they, they had like a weird accent on oh, their regular French. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The same thing happens with Chinese. Um, you know, Co Korean is more accents. You know, Korea is also a small country. I'm pretty sure they have their own dialect. I never heard it. There's just very heavy accents depending on what region you're in. I cannot. I cannot narrow down the accents for the outside of the. France, I can't mm -hmm. narrow down that, except for the United States. Right. That I, yeah, obviously yeah. we can do that, yeah. and France. But um, as when it comes to Asians, I yeah. can I can I know the distinction between a Japanese accent, mm -hmm. Chinese, yep. Korean, Korean yep. uh, Vietnamese, mm -hmm. Filipino. Mm -hmm. But within those, no. Yeah, Thai also have a different accent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Malaysians have a different accent. Should we do Should we do the Asian accents? I mean, I can. <laughs> I don't think you should. Oh God! Well. Yeah, please don't. Okay. We, we just we, we're partners now, 50-50. <laughs> I but take 50% of the loss. Yeah, <laughs> my problems are your problems now. <laughs> well, oh. yeah, but what what can what can, you can say? You know, you, we use that excuse. You know, how it's like, oh, I can say the N word because yeah. my friend is. Oh my God. <laughs> Please don't test oh, those waters. Please no, no. don't test those waters. No, we're in the hospitality business on top of it. Yeah. We cannot. No, no, no. Like my father's, what did Marcel say? No speak religion, 
not speak of the sex, and not speak of the politics, okay? Yes, yes. and he said one more, no? There was another one, but I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> I must not have obeyed that one. <laughs> All right. Mm. Money. Money, yes, that's what he said. This this is a good beer, this Delirium oh. uh, Noel. Delirium Noel. If we were ever to get a sponsor, I would like this one. <laughs> well, uh, some comments for you towards you specifically, Frenchie. Good. I thought would be funny. Did that guy start making steak out of the womb? How does he have 40 years of experience and look 40? Hey, people mm. have no idea how old you are. No, nope, definitely 40 years under my belt yep. of cooking. Yep, yep. How, and let everyone know, when were you a full-fledged cook? Because you were a full fledged, yeah. Like, when did you start in the kitchen? Oh, professionally. Pro professionally. Yeah. How old were you? Professionally would mean that someone paid for the food that I prepared. Okay. Right? Let's start there. Yeah. How old were you? Is that a good? Yeah. That's a good marker. Professionally. Because you could be cooking and be yeah. a good cook, but nobody paid for your services. Right, right, right. Right. right? Yeah, so professional yeah. means that you were paid. Your, your services were taken right. into account right. and that someone had to pay for it. Yeah. Um, I was, no, I was a dishwasher as a little kid. That doesn't count. Bussing tables as a little kid. That doesn't count. Mm -hmm. So we're talking uh, cooking. Okay. How little is a little kid were you bussing tables and washing dishes? Um, I remember being stood on a milk crate to do dishes. Wow. So whatever size I was yeah. that I needed a milk crate what, nine, to get to reach the, nine, the spray ten. nozzle. Yeah. yeah. Nine, ten. Yeah. My father used to make me uh, do the liquor inventory because... <laughs> The shelves were very yeah. deep yeah. and he couldn't go through it. So yeah. he would put me in the shelf <laughs> and I would grab the bottles that he would put up and right. I would push him to the back. Mm. And I was like four, five, six there yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you were born into it. Born into yeah. it. But cooking, yeah. um, 12, 11, 12 yeah. for sure. Yeah. Getting burnt. Right. Like taking wow. the risks Working of a kitchen. The yeah. Behind a stove. Yeah. <sighs> Damn. Damn, dude. So. Just to give you guys some ideas. He has 40 years of experience. You know, he was professionally cooking at 12, 13. There you go. We'll leave you at that. You know, I started my first job when I was 12. My dad had me work as the cashier at his gas station. And then uh, uh, he, the mini mart used to sell cigarettes and uh, I sold to a minor. And then he uh, stopped selling cigarettes altogether because he got a summons. <laughs> so that, wait, so that kid was undercover? Yeah, undercover. God, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. That was a big loss. Yeah, I think it was over ten grand for that fine. And the loss, uh, the income lost. Yeah, was this for your dad? Your dad? Yeah. How did he even let that happen? Well, I worked at the. I worked at his gas station. He with a good lawyer, he could have. He could have got gone out of that because you're allowed to employ your kids. Yeah, but I sold to a minor. That's the point. Oh. Um, a minor sold to a minor. I was oh. 13 years old, and I sold to like a 15 year old. <laughs> And then he stopped selling cigarettes altogether after that. More comments about Frenchie. Can we, oh, so remember how you said, uh, you, you know, you don't want to be drawn fat or anything. Well, mm -hmm. Wang said it right. You're learning a, you're learning a hard, hard lesson, lesson. About, about the internet because uh, can we rename Frenchie? This was after your um, My Heritage results came out. Uh, we, we had an episode come yeah, out. I can, I'm Heritage. reading this already. Yes, I'm already yeah. ahead of you now. Can we rename Frenchie the Iberian ham? <laughs> I don't mind that. <laughs> I don't mind that. I really don't. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, let's see. Like, uh, we should have nights. Like, we should have nights of, like, where we uh, um, embellish the, these nicknames. Yeah. I'll oh, be yeah. there. We should be a podcast. Well, I'm the Iberian ham. <laughs> Ta -da -da, Spanish music in the background. <laughs> Iberian ham. People were complimenting your whistling skills in the Drio video. Oh, yes. I'm a very good whistler. You're a very good whistler. When I, was listen when I was watching the edits, I was, I was like, wow. Fucking mm -hmm. spot on key. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Frenchie was in New York so long, Italian diffused into him like a pickle. <laughs> diffused? Okay. Let's make sure that diffuse means infused. Yeah, I think he meant infused. I don't want a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want an Italian pickle inside me. <sighs> Are Italians like the leading New York representative? Well, I think that Ita New York Italian It's all, it's all the movies. Yeah, and it's the all game. the movies really is what, what gives that um, stereotype. Okay, Go watch The French Connection. Okay, it's safe to say that Frenchie is my favorite <laughs> British. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? what? I like 
I like being able to say British because it doesn't mean English. Ah, so I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned because we went through the thing. There yeah. is no English. There's Irish. There's Welsh. Scottish. Scottish. Yeah. There was no English. Yeah. True that. True. So I'm uh, I'm happy. I'm still good. I'm still good, people. Frenchie's DNA is more closely tied to regional culinary arts history than we may ever know. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a great. That way, put that. Yeah, I'm that was a great quote. That was a great quote, or a great comment rather. Some great DJ. Well, he knows he's great. Apparently, <laughs> Frenchie's DNA is more closely tied to regional cul culinary arts history than we may ever know. I like that. I like that a lot. I like these. There's we we can we can beautify that phrase. Yeah, that's gonna be a tattoo. I can tell. <laughs> All right, so I can already tell this is a moment where Frenchie goes, Brian, write that down. <laughs> write this down. Write this down. I like these. I like these. I like these. Now that my father's passed away, it's incredible how much I'm reliving his expressions and everything like that. I used to make fun of him, yeah. and now I'm using them. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think the podcast brought it out of you more, or just it's naturally happening, or a bit know. of both? I don't know. I just. Uh, but I guess but I'm the, loving it. But I think on the podcast you have almost more of an opportunity to storytell in yes. some ways, right? It's definitely storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Because I miss him and I want to like yeah. make him like survive yeah. in this 100%. format. Oh, this was a good one. I thought this would make great merch. Oh, another Abby Wise comment. Oh my God, I need to see a Homer Frenching, a Homer Frenchy choking a Brian Bart now. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I think that would make great merch. Okay, but are we true to size? Do I have to stand up on a, on a, st on a stool? <laughs> make it even better. <laughs> oh, here's uh, some comments about, you know, how we were, we were afraid that uh, people were going to make fat versions of Batman um, villains. So someone, um, yes, okay, we're going to go through these, but someone yesterday mentioned the best one. Really? Uh, okay, well, bring it up well, I'm going to trust this. Blondie because she, Kingpin. Yes, well, that but that's not a Batman character. That's a Marvel character. That's yeah, fuck to you. It's <laughs> it's the you. same. All right, let's keep going because there is one comment in it particular. It has to be DC. Yes, we have to stay within universes. But there is one. No, we don't. There is Who's one. saying this? I'm saying it. I'm a comic book fan. You don't like you, Marvel? I love Marvel, but you and do. you don't like DC. You, I like, I like. The you DC. know, there's a, a universe where they both yes, exist, right? In the same Amalgam. one. Amalgam. Yeah, I remember. Okay, so yeah. Kingpin. Right. I love Kingpin. All right. Well, I get to wear the suits. Yes. Yes. We can do a Spider-Man version. Listen, let's just stick with the Batman theme, right? Because you're afraid of being fat man. We officially christened this the mm -hmm. Fat Cave. Yeah. Even though Kevin Smith does it on his podcast, but. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. It's not the first time that he's taken my ideas. Kevin Smith? Yeah. Wait, I feel like you told me something about this. Yeah. Wait, what did he take from you? Um, dinner for, f oh no, that's John Favreau. No, that's John Favreau. <laughs> yeah, another fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Kevin Smith is not fat. Anymore. I know. Yeah. Well, he had to go through. I love Kevin Smith. By I love the way. Kevin Smith. Yeah. I love Mall him. Rats is one of my all-time favorite movies. But he had he had to get healthy. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was because he boy. like no he was he, he was almost a, died on stage. Yeah. 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 Uh, Frenchie, how about Two Face? Oh man, he if we could get his attention, that would be a a dream of mine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I the, I love Kevin Smith. I love Smith. Kevin Smith too. When 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 what's the first one? Um, the, the one that got him all the recognition. Um, Clerks. Clerks, yeah. I Clerks love great. Clerks. I like Clerks too, as well. I love all of them. I didn't because, like the recent one. Yeah, but it, yeah, but it, it's, it tries too hard yeah. and everything. But he's it's for the fans. Yeah, true, true. It's true. for the fans only. I, I will say this, I, I don't dislike it. No, it wasn't my favorite. You have to look at it as being a fan mm -hmm. of that and you accept everything he does. Right. End okay. of story. Okay. It doesn't have to be good or great. Right. It has to be... Like, it has to feed into the... Okay, go right, back to All right, it. so, uh, Frenchie, how about Two-Face? He is a great Batman. No, I don't no. like liars. Uh, oh. Yeah, I don't like liars. Okay, okay. So all I right. couldn't be Two-Face. Yeah, okay, all right. Good point, good point. Uh, Frenchie is the Red Hood, Jason Todd. I problem would... Problem solved. I don't mind that. Red Red Hood is badass. But, he is, he is but like, like Two-Face, no. I don't like anything about lies, okay. lying. I don't want to be right. associated with lies. I respect that. I respect that. We're getting close. Commissioner Gordo... With love, I Frenchie. Don't <laughs> I don't mind. Let's see, we got uh, <laughs> Salami Grundy. 
so Solomon Grundy. Ah, oh, the he's the he's like the kind of the Hulk character. Yeah, you know? but he's a uh, like a dead. He's, yeah, he's a dead guy. He's yeah. a dead guy. Yeah, I just he's like a zombie. the name. Yeah, he's a zombie. Yeah, no, I just like the name Solomon, Solomon Grundy. Solomon so, it, Grundy. You know, especially that's a with very all your heavy metal name. That is. But that uh, has that does that exist there? What a band called Solomon Grundy? It should it should? It's so cool. Make a good song name for sure. Frenchie isn't fat. He's self advertising. <laughs> I wouldn't trust a skinny chef, but when I see Frenchie's belly, I immediately think this guy's not afraid to enjoy his own product. He knows what's up. I do eat a lot of my <laughs> own food. <laughs> oh my god! And then so I mean that that's the problem. I've always been. I used to be always skinny and in good shape. Yeah, but that fucking pandemic hit me hard. <laughs> when I got to cook every day, yeah, just for myself. Mm -hmm. Oh god. Oh my god. Yeah, the I ideas I, I came the up with. Yeah, yeah. The two sticks of butter per chicken. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> I can't cook for myself. It's it's lethal. Yeah, yeah. It's lethal. I, I need you to live a long, so, long time because we're 50-50 now. Well, then you need. Then we need to get on a on a program here. Yeah, we do. We do. Listen, people. So you want to get fat doesn't mean you have to be fat. It means the i the the, the idea the of fun, living, the living, the fun, getting fat, don't hold back. and like the joy of that food that will get you fat in moderation. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We don't want all of you to live for a long time. <laughs> But it's so fun to be fat. <laughs> oh my God. It's so much better. It's like, you know, it's like, you'd rather be poor rich. It's so much better to be rich. <laughs> hey, I don't care. It's so much better to be fat. <laughs> and someone left a comment to this comment. That's a good point. A skinny chef would be like a dentist with no teeth. <gasps> I'm, that's a good that's, one. That's a good one, yeah. That's a good one. All right. I think these last two comments are really warm onto the DC characters that you and I could mirror. All right? Okay. All right. Frenchie could be Superman. Mm, no. No? Really? No. I thought you would like that. No. Batman and Superman, you know? No, they're, Superman they're is clean is clean cut. It's 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 a coin with the two same faces. Clark Kent is clean cut mm -hmm. and Superman is clean well, cut. What about Bruce Wayne and Batman? No, not the same. Not the same. Okay. Not okay. the same. Okay. The real the Batman is Batman is the real person mm -hmm. and and Bruce Wayne is the character, the character, right? But Superman's the real person. No, Clark Kent when he's relaxed, that's who he wants to be. That's like Okay. All right. All right. Don't necessarily agree with you here, but I like this one a lot. Fat Man. Wang Enterprises in Got Ham City. <laughs> that that's a lot of combinations there. That's a good one right there. Oh man! All right, I think. Uh, no, nah, Kingpin. Kingpin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what spider? Let me know in the comments. This, what this, Spider Man this lighting, character would I be? First of all, this lighting is making me look bald. So, might as well embrace it. Embrace it. But okay, if if Frenchie is Kingpin, what Spider Man character am I? Let me know in the comments. Well, below. I I always thought of um, because it's. Well, if we're in Marvel, then Sandman. For me? Yeah. Why Sandman? Just curious. It's just heavy metal. That's my favorite song. Uh, okay. okay. Dun, okay. Dun, but you know, dun. the Sandman character, you know. He's a good guy. Yes. But there's also a Neil Gaiman character named Sandman. You don't know about this mm -hmm. comic? It's called Sandman and it's, a, it's the God of Dreams. And that's a badass character. I love that character. Is Sandman. it dark? It's dark, very dark. Comic. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to you'll have to educate me. Oh, there's a there's a Netflix series, a live action, and it's good. It's actually really good. We can binge that. Okay. Yeah. Let's do yes. It. Okay. You know, we call this the Fat Cave, but uh, there were some good ones here. Brian, Chef Brian of Sarlacc Pit House. As in the Sarlacc Pit? Yeah, <laughs> because we're trying to figure out names for this room. On the uh, Jamie Oliver Pimps Ramen with What video that we did together, got to call Frenchie's house. Jabba's palace. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, and then, but look, look, we called it the Fat Cave, but a bunch of people without us, without knowing that we deemed this place the cat Fat Cave, the Fat Cave, followed by how about what about the Fat Cave <laughs> for your name for the name of your house? Because remember, you were saying that your house, every house in France has a name, so mm -hmm. your house is Kakiet, right? So Kakiet. You, Kakiet, right? So this is, you know, we're trying to figure out a name for this. This is the Fat Cave and people 
People were coming up with this before we officially announced it. So it's official, people. This is the fat cave. This is the fat cave. All right. That is all ooh, for viewer comments. And uh, I figure we would end this podcast episode with the story of how I involuntarily took over a Chinese tech takeout restaurant. End of podcast. What time? What well, time is it, dude? We've been it's filming. Three o'clock. We've been filming for an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap this up with with my story uh, because I've been teasing this on my channel even before you started appearing as a guest. And you haven't touched on it. I've mentioned it numerous times. I just so you've teased. I've, I didn't mean to tease teased. it for this long. I just I just didn't know the right opportunity to. I didn't want to put out a dedicated video for it. Now we have the podcast. We can talk about whatever. Wrap we want. it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my first restaurant ever was uh, opened in Forest Hills, Queens, and I wanted to open up a Taiwanese beef noodle soup restaurant, something modeled after the feel of uh, Momofuku Noodle House. You know, around this time. Oh, it was on. It was up there. It was up there. Yeah, Momofuku was open for a couple of years. It was at its peak, I would say it was, or was on its way to its peak. Everyone was crazy about ramen at this point. You know, of course, anyone who knew always knew ramen was the shit, but this is when like ramen was What's really- What's his name again? David Chang. Yeah, he's a villain, by the way. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, uh, well, there was a, he was a friend of a friend and uh -huh. we enjoyed our malice. Oh. He's odd job. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Listen, uh, I have I know several people who've worked for him, and uh, none of them have great things to say about David Chang. I will say this though, uh, he's an artist. He's an artist, but also, um, if you watch the show Mind of a Chef, there was a whole season dedicated to him, and I thought I, I thought he was a dick from everything I've heard. But after watching that, I became a fan. He's very smart. Yeah, very, he's very smart. super smart. Super smart. Very good looking guy. Really? No. No. Oh. I don't think so. Not that I'm like a pillar of good looks myself. You know? uh, well, I'm a good looking guy. That's yeah, all that matters. You're a beautiful guy. You're a beautiful guy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wanted to open up my own version of a Momofuku doing Taiwanese beef noodle soup. I had family out in the West Coast with restaurants called, there's still some of them open. Shout out to Liang's Kitchen. Uh, they made Wait, this concept is, still exists? Yeah, out in the West Coast. What's and it called? Liang's Kitchen, and we'll go. Liang? Li Liang, Liang's Kitchen. L-I-A-N-G-S Kitchen. It does sound familiar. Yeah, yeah, no, they had several locations uh, many years ago, not as many now, but they're pretty famous out on the West Coast. Uh, I think specifically in the San Jose area, which, you know, we're, we're going to the West Coast in February. We're gonna go collab with someone. Can't tell you much more than that, but um, well, we can go check out the restaurant. But I wanted to bring that concept to New York and kind of repackage it as this. Mm, will we have time to do stuff over there? Yeah, okay. I, I, we, we have to. I, that was one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is kind of okay. no. hammered. Not now, not okay. on the podcast, but we are going to the West Coast to collab with someone really big, probably one of our biggest collabs ever. So um, with that said, uh, I asked, I told my dad about this idea. He loved it. He loved it. How that. old were you? Oh, this was at the beginning of You're my 20. career. I just graduated from CIA. So no, I was like 25. I, I graduated. Wait, how old were you when you went to the CIA? I was like 22. Dude. Yeah. I went to school later. Mm. I took a break. You know. Did you go to college? No. The only college I did was CIA. So I went to, I, I did a little college in China. I went to the Conservatory of Music. And I didn't do check. I didn't show up to any classes. I didn't even know how to read music. <laughs> That's a language I lost. Music? I used to be able to read music and play piano and all that. Completely lost it. Completely lost Completely it? Completely lost it. I did not know this. I was, a f I was uh, impressive. A talented, talented little boy. Mm -hmm. You're always my I had little boy. concerts. I had little concerts and everything. I was, oh, uh, shit. I was like, people like that's to show off. Have, that's why you have such good pitch. Because when I was listening to you whistle, your pitch was very, very good. Yeah. And, you know, like I'm a musician. I'm not, you know, professionally trained or anything, but I, I know when something's on pitch. A lot of people have asked me to do, uh, when I sing, to do the hot, what's it? Alto, alt, no. What's soprano? second to last? Soprano? No. I don't know. I have no idea. Below, below soprano. I have no idea. Whatever. But, uh, 
Anyway, wanted to bring this. What are we talking about? How I accidentally took over a Chinese takeout. Oh, okay. Restaurant. Okay. So I told my dad about this. He said he would invest. I uh, learned the recipes, started looking for a location, and essentially uh, my dad found a Chinese restaurant in Forest Hills where the owners were looking to retire and sell off the restaurant. And my dad said, this is great. We'll take this spot. They have everything built. We just take it over, renovate it a little, and you, we can get going. We took over, We, uh, my dad purchased it. I was supposed to be the chef owner. And then the first thing my dad does is make my mom the GM. My mom has no fucking clue how to run a restaurant. She has no restaurant experience. He just wanted someone he could trust. Exactly. And then I- He didn't go on skill. Yeah. And I basically- It's weird how these old people, they just want trust. They don't care about skill. Exactly. And I told my dad, absolutely not. Then my mom got really hurt by that. Like, <laughs> you don't trust me? I was like, mom, I trust you but you don't know how to run a restaurant. You don't know how to run the front of the house. Anyway, uh, so, you know, she took it, she was running, she was the GM and my dad basically took over purchasing. So he would like go to pick up supplies for me and then bring back like five, six cases of like eggplant and cabbage, stuff that wasn't on the oh, menu. Use this. Yeah, like use it, yeah, it was cheap. It's about to go bad, but yeah. they sold it to me for like pennies on the dollar. So like- Use it. Use it. It's like, dad, we don't even have enough business to like, you know, sell two orders of and this. And how are you, you gonna know? advertise this? How are you gonna advertise? Like, it's gonna go bad in a day or two. Uh, he would do stuff like, and like, you know, while we had a falling out for a short time, we're fine now. Um, but the thing that really crushed me, and I understand where my dad was coming from now in hindsight, but, I wanted to open up this simplified menu, Taiwanese restaurant, have like 10 items on the menu. And my dad was like, no, you're gonna have one menu that has all the Taiwanese beef noodle soup. And simultaneously, you will have all of the stuff that they currently have on their menu. So you're, and I was like, so I'm gonna run two restaurants out of one location? He's like, yes. I was like, dad, like, do you, do you like, he's like, I don't want to lose the old customers. We have to keep all the original customers. I'm like, Dad, these, these are two completely separate concepts. And you need twice the ingredients, twice, twice everything. Twice the ingredients, twice everything. Twice the effort. Yeah, twice the effort. All across the board. And we only have space for this one concept that's already there. It's like we have to either rebrand or we just stick with what they already have because, you know, they have a built in clientele. They've built a good rapport with the neighborhood. And, uh, my dad, you know, basically was like, well, it's my fucking money. So uh, you're going to do as I tell you. And uh, that's what exactly what happened. And uh, then he proceeded to open up a second location, had me. He opened up a second location doing the beef noodle soup, but also just adding on this whole other menu to it, had me act as the central kitchen, which this was the concept was to establish this location and then open satellite kitchens. But the thing was, I was supplying him, but he was never paying me. So the funds were going out. The fun, like my restaurant was just hemorrhaging money. I'd be like, I need to get paid for this stuff. Like I'm buying thousands of dollars worth of product. And like, I'm, you guys haven't given me a check yet. You know, like I, I'm just like the bank is running dry. So uh, again, you know, he's a mechanic. He's never run. He actually, he did own a restaurant before and that one failed too. So, um, that's more or less how I act, you know, uh, involuntarily took over a Chinese takeout restaurant because this restaurant was beloved by the neighborhood and it was called the Peking Duck House in Forest Hills, Queens. And they were very famous for their Peking Duck. And, you know, I would, how, had I been your daddy, <laughs> <laughs> had I been your daddy, yeah. I would have said, let's keep this existing menu right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll transition slowly. Mm -hmm. We'll minimize this menu. Yeah. And then slowly add to it. Yeah. And that's what it sort of started to turn into. But the big problem was that he opened the second location and I had to simultaneously provide And did that one have a third menu or did that have yeah, a similar menu? Yeah, that had a menu? third menu that oh. I had zero control over. And he was hiring psychopaths, like people who would like fight with Chinese cleavers in the kitchen. <laughs> Just... And the thing is like, my dad doesn't, can't cook this stuff. So if they quit, 
there's nothing he can do. You know, they made incredible food, but there was a reason why they didn't have a job. Like they were batshit fucking crazy. Chinese fighting with cleavers. Surprisingly, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> Except switch out Chinese for Puerto Rican and French. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was a third menu. And, um, you know, in hindsight, uh, I was also inexperienced. I was very young. I didn't know how to, I knew how to cook. I can make those beef noodle soups to this day perfectly. And I know I can make a bang bowl of beef. Taiwanese style beef noodle soup, but I was not a business owner then. And I wasn't a business owner until recently either. You know, I wasn't a, I, I, I would say now I know what I'm doing <laughs> with the less within the last six months, as far as operating a restaurant, but back then, no way. So even if, even if I did have my way, I don't think it would have been successful, but don't I say that. Yeah, no, I firmly believe that. Okay. I was too young. I was too young, but, um, I would love to still bring this concept forward in New York one day we'll see but um it also what the taiwanese yeah noodle? the taiwanese beef noodle soup but um it also involves my family on the west coast and i don't want to like thai family and work don't anymore. you think there's we have to play a waiting game now it's i feel like everything is some asian content like uh like some everything that's opening up is asian oriented yeah. right yeah, now. yeah yeah it's I a agree little it's a little saturated right i agree I'm not, listen, I'm not in a rush. I'm going to do more mission sandwiches before I do more. The great thing about French food yeah. and French concept, they're like dwindling. Yeah. And it's. Would you say. I'm like the Highlander. I was about last to. Last one standing. Yeah, well, that's what I was about to ask. Would you say you're probably the oldest. Oh, yeah. The oldest New York I am French the, restaurant. I am by far the oldest privately owned. I was just about to say. French privately restaurant. family owned French yeah. restaurant. No yeah. partners. No. no yeah. No, no uh, silent partners, yeah. no hidden. It's just me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Da, da. You know, I was, um, I was talking to Blondie and I was telling her like, I really feel your restaurant has become this lost art in the New York City restaurant landscape. It is, they are very few and far between just the classic like you know how we were talking about the levels of restaurant mm -hmm. and i said that your restaurant is a good introductory solid like if you're gonna call a place a restaurant le rivage is one of the best examples le rivage and it's it's has been copy pasted from france mm -hmm. as a neighborhood restaurant right like le rivage would be a neighborhood restaurant in france in France, Le Rivage doesn't look like a French restaurant. Right. It's just a restaurant. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and w it would like have almost, a loyal clientele. Almost like a tavern or a pub yeah. here, right? Like an equivalent uh, to there. Like, it would, no, it'd be an, it wouldn't be distinguished as being a French restaurant. Right. It would just be a restaurant. Well, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, just as synonymous as a tavern or a pub is here in a neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? In America, mm -hmm. right? Le Rivage is kind of that for France. Yeah, but you're dumbing it down a little bit. I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to dumb it down, but that's just the example I'm giving. Yeah. Right? Like like you said, you're literally transporting a neighborhood restaurant from France into the heart of New York. Exactly. And uh, it just, it yeah, this place means a lot to me. You know? And yes. I think, I think it's just such a cool place. It's sappy on me. Yeah. <laughs> don't get sappy on me. We're on a good, we're on a good wave here. I'm not trying to get sappy on you. No, I'm just you're, telling you're you losing me with the the, the 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 unsuccessful restaurant thing. We need to be positive now, constantly, constantly. Why? Because you're afraid of losing fifty percent. <laughs> <laughs> Positivity, yeah. constantly. constantly. That's it. Fake it till you make it, baby. <laughs> well, guys, that is my story of how I involuntarily took over a Chinese takeout restaurant. I have no regrets. Was it about a learning it. lesson? It was definitely one. It was the best learning lesson for sure. Made Do me you remember chef. it? Do I remember it? Yeah, I can never forget it. So a lesson learned. Yeah, there you go. All right, wonderful. Well, um, that's all I got. That's really what I wanted to cover today. And uh, this podcast is an hour and forty minutes long, so. Uh, yeah, we need to film some Pro Chef Reacts episodes. How much editing is going to get done on this? A lot. Good. Because <laughs> even I was getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did making it. I am your host. S stop with this we shit. I can speak for myself. I'm your host, Chef Brian Sout, not your typical chef. I'm your other host, 
typical chef. <laughs> you know, typical French douchey chef, French chef, you know. <laughs> Old, about to be got put out to pasture. <laughs> <laughs> Frenchy to all you lovelies out there. Yes. Who love me. And uh, let's say bye to the wide cam. Oh, that one's, that that one's, one's off. Shot. Yeah, that one's shot. Oh, yeah. man, this is going to be a whole new look. Yeah.